In this video we'll talk about conditional statements, kind of the general theory behind them, and then how it'll lead into mathematics. So before we talk about conditional statements, let's do a quick conver or have a quick conversation about variables. So variables, keep in mind there are two types. There are unknowns, and there are placeholders, sometimes referred to as dummy variables. So these serve two different kind of roles. Unknowns, usually we can solve for. You know, for example, x plus 7 equals 12. Well, we could solve for x. It stands for a particular value or maybe a couple values, but usually we, we're using this type of variable to solve for something. With a placeholder, it's more about expressing a relationship. So like, for instance, uh, we, we usually use them in formulas. So like f equals ma. Force equals mass times acceleration. The letters don't so much matter, but what matters is that this relationship holds true. We could easily call it Q equals XZ, and it would still have the same effect. These letters have meaning, and usually we assign them to something that's close, like F for force instead of Q for force. That just makes more sense. Now, by and large, what we'll be talking about here is we'll be talking about variables that represent portions of a phrase or a sentence and that's a little bit different than what we've done in the past. So if we look at a conditional statement, its general format is if something then something else. And most statements in mathematics can be written like this. And once you follow the structure to it, it, it lends a lot of, I guess, credence to what we're doing, to what you see. And if you understand this, then you can read a textbook a lot easier. You can see the patterns. You can really determine what is this theorem telling me? What is this property telling me? What does this definition actually mean? Now, for shorthand, We have H implies C. That's what this little arrow means, is implies. And it basically means if H, then C. Now, the reason we use H and C here, the if part is our hypothesis. And I'm not a huge fan of the term, but this is what it's called. It's basically your conditions. If you have this stuff happen, then I can deduce what will happen next. And what we call C is the conclusion. So like as an example, if x equals 4, then x squared equals 16. I can make that deduction. If I allow x to be 4, and if I know it's 4, then x squared will always, always, always be 16. So if we look at conditional statements, really there's two types. There's generalizations and there's existence, and the difference between them is pretty straightforward. Generalizations we're talking about for all. And a quick note in mathematics, a shorthand for the phrase for all is kind of an upside down capital A, or a V with a line through it if you prefer. It's a way of saying, okay, for all right triangles, the Pythagorean theorem applies. And generally speaking, if it's not specified, what we're talking about, we're talking about a generalization. So it just says, for right triangles, this happens. Or we can assume they're talking about for all right triangles. Or even in our last example, where x equals 4. Technically, what we're, there's, a, there's a caveat there that says, for all x, where x equals 4, x squared equals 16. We're making an assumption there that for every x, it's equal to 4. x squared equals 16. Now, existence. This one usually starts with, there exists, and usually we're talking about a particular case. There exists a number that is a multiple of seven. I'm not saying all numbers are multiples of seven. I'm just saying there's at least one. So this one, we uh, abbreviate this phrase with kind of a backwards capital E. 
And the difference between the two is that existence, very easy to prove. All I have to prove is one case. I just have to prove that it can happen. That's it. For a generalization, I have to prove all cases if I want it to be proven true. So that's where we'd have to use our, our variables and we'd have to really generalize as much as possible and try and keep things as unrestricted as possible. Whereas existence, all we have to do is prove one case. Now, interestingly enough, to prove false, to disprove a generalization is much easier than existence. So I can disprove a generalization with one case. And if I wanted to disprove an existence, that'd be much more difficult. So I'd have to disprove all cases. Essentially, I'd have to say there does not exist one, and then I'd have to make sure that I can rule everything out. Well, now that we've talked about a little bit about conditional statements, and we've talked about the types, what does it mean if two statements are equivalent? And this one's a little bit tricky, because it's somewhat counterintuitive. It, the logic here is, is not the norm of what we're used to seeing. So two statements are equivalent if and only if they are both true or false together. And that's a little difficult to discern, but for instance, for example, if x equals 4, then x squared equals 16, this would be equivalent to if x squared does not equal 16, then x does not equal 4. And this is where we'd have to use truth tables, which I don't have time to get to in this video, but I will post another one using truth tables to kind of express this a little better. But the idea behind an equivalent statement is that if this one is true, then so is this one. If it's false, then the other one's false. They're both true or false at the same time. 